five insane cars thrown in a landfill. Number three will shock you. In this video, we will explore the shocking discovery of five rare and valuable cars found abandoned and thrown into a landfill. So let's get started. Number five, Cadillac Samarin. You know what they say, even the best make mistakes. Cadillac learned this the hard way in 1985 with the ambitious but ultimately unsuccessful Cadillac Siren. Intended to make a splash in the compact luxury market, the Siren was simply a Chevrolet Cavalier in a fancy dress and a hefty price tag, which didn't resonate well with consumers. In an era when rising fuel costs and evolving customer tastes were pushing the popularity of the compact luxury segment sky high, Cadillac wanted to create a vehicle that was both fuel efficient and encapsulated the opulence linked with its brand. But as we know, best laid plans often go awry. The Siren at its core was simply a dressed-up Chevrolet Cavalier carrying the Cadillac logo, a fact that didn't sit well with many Cadillac enthusiasts. Sales weren't exactly expanding, and Siren quickly developed a poorly executed attempt at downsizing. The backlash and poor sales led to many Sirens being abandoned, ending up in junkyards and, in some cases, even landfills. And that's nothing in front of the car at number three. In a twist that no one saw coming, a small but energetic community of enthusiasts has been growing over the past few years. Committed to preserving the Siren's legacy, these collectors cherish the car for its unique position in Cadillac's history and its symbolism of the brand's evolution. Number 4. DeLorean DMC-12 Did you know that in the 1980s, the DeLorean DMC-12, a name popularized by the Back to the Future series, ruled the roost? However, the story behind it is more than meets the eye. Even though it's hard to imagine, many of these fantastic machines were left gathering dust in warehouses after the company's bankruptcy. Sadly, some were even left to decay in landfills, a heartbreaking fate for such an awe-inspiring car. John DeLorean, an auto industry pioneer, dreamed up the DMC-12 with the ambition to drive radical change in the automotive sector. Unveiled in 1981, the car was a sight for sore eyes, with its sleek stainless steel bodywork and unique gullwing doors, making it the epitome of futuristic design. Thanks to the unparalleled creativity of legendary car designer Giorgetto Giugiaro, the DeLorean captured the hearts of car enthusiasts and the public alike. Despite its show-stopping appearance, the DeLorean had a bumpy ride right from the beginning. The DMC-12, birthed in Dunmurray, Northern Ireland, had its fair share of problems, from inconsistent build quality to major production delays. Critics also pointed fingers at the car's mediocre performance, with its 2.85-liter V6 engine, acquired from Puzzo Renault Volvo, only generating a scanty 130 horsepower far below the expectations for a sports car of its era. Financial woes soon added to the company's mounting problems. The magnitude of the project had strained its resources, with high production costs making it almost impossible to turn a profit. The company's already shaky reputation took an even harder hit when John DeLorean was arrested in 1982 for drug trafficking in a scandalous sting operation. The resulting fallout led to the company's inevitable collapse. After the DeLorean Motor Company's bankruptcy, countless unsold DMC-12s were left forsaken in warehouses. Over time, these cars either found new homes with collectors, were dismantled, or shockingly, dumped in landfills. It's disheartening to imagine such a celeb status car meeting such a grim fate. Number 3. Brickland SV1 Get ready for a blast from the past. Can you imagine discarding your vintage car into a landfill today? In the 1970s, that was exactly what most people did with their Brooklyn SV1. Unbelievable, right? Unlike other cars on this list, the Safety Vehicle 1 SV1 wasn't necessarily bad. It was just plagued by terrible timing and unfortunate circumstances. The brainchild of American millionaire Michael Bricklin the SV1 was designed to be the safest car in the world. Featuring gullwing doors and a fiberglass body, the SV1 boasted an impressive array of safety features like bumpers integrated with shock absorbers and side beams that could withstand impacts at up to 5 miles per hour. The car had flashy gullwing doors and focused on innovative safety features. 
Still, production hiccups and financial woes led to its untimely demise. Heartbreakingly, some of these unsold beauties met their fate in landfills. Birthed from the vibrant imagination of American businessman Malcolm Brickland, the vision behind the SV-1 was simple yet revolutionary. It was to create a sports car that didn't have to trade safety for style or performance. And boy oh boy did it live up to that dream. SV-1, produced in beautiful New Brunswick, Canada, was a showstopper with its safety innovations. From the integrated roll cage to energy-absorbing bumpers and a hardy body made from acrylic resin bonded to fiberglass, the SV-1 was ahead of its time. Under the hood, it had a robust V8 engine, sourced first from AMC and then later on from Ford. The SV-1 promised ample performance to complement its daring design, making it a strong contender in the market. What happened was that the SV-1's production journey was not as smooth as silk. Delayed assembly processes and quality control issues led to inconsistencies in the final product. Plus, the steep price tag and limited dealer network didn't help attract consumers. Financial troubles soon crept in, and production couldn't be sustained. By the time 1976 rolled around, less than 3,000 Bricklin SV-1s had seen the light of day before bankruptcy reared its ugly head. In the fallout of this business venture's collapse, many unsold and even defective cars were left gathering dust. Some reports even suggest that a good number were scrapped and sent to landfills. A bitter end for a vehicle that showed so much promise. Number 2. The Sunken Bugatti Truth is sometimes stranger than fiction. In 1934, rumor has it that French race car legend René Dreyfus found himself in a disastrous situation. Dreyfus, celebrated in the roaring 20s and 30s for his exceptional skills on the Grand Prix circuit, was caught up in a high-stakes poker game with a well-heeled Swiss playboy, Heidelbert Bod, in the heart of Paris. When funds dwindled, Dreyfus made the daring decision to bet his treasured 1925 Bugatti Type 22 Bressy, an iconic racing car no less. Alas, luck wasn't on Dreyfus's side, and the Bugatti became Bod's prized possession. However, our tale takes a twist and doesn't culminate with a joyride into the sunset. Upon Bod's return to Switzerland, he was stopped at the border and was barred from taking his newly won jewel, the Bugatti, with him. Struggling to raise the necessary funds to release the car from customs, Bod's spectacular Bugatti became an item marked for destruction, just as any other confiscated goods at the time. In a different era, Swiss authorities chose a rather unusual and admittedly not so environmentally friendly method to dispose of the vehicle. They decided to sink it into the depths of Lago Maggiore. There it stayed, a masterpiece of French design, virtually forgotten until 2009. The Bugatti's second chance at life was ironically triggered by a tragic event when a local diving club member was brutally murdered by three youngsters. To honor his memory and raise funds for a charity to combat youth violence, the diving club took upon the noble mission of resurrecting the Bugatti. Initially estimated to attract a modest sum of about $57,000, the Bugatti's price skyrocketed due to the intense bidding war. California-based Art Deco car enthusiast Peter Mullen battled it out with a Bugatti lover from the Netherlands for the precious artifact. Emerging victorious, Mullen now takes pride in displaying the Bugatti in its original lake-found condition at his Mullen Automotive Museum in Oxnard, California. Number 1. AMC Gremlin Made in the 1970s during fuel uncertainty, the AMC Gremlin was intended to be the answer for budget-conscious drivers. But alas, its quirky design and less-than-stellar craftsmanship left it a laughingstock rather than a lifeline, leading to many being trashed and some even finding their final resting place in landfills. A bit of a brutal end for a car that merely sought to be a beacon during tricky economic phases. Now let's turn the clock back to 1970. That's where the AMC Gremlin first hit the scene. It was an answer to the surge in demand for fuel-efficient cars. Small in stature and light on the wallet, the Gremlin was meant to offer a viable, practical alternative for American drivers trying desperately to navigate the oil crisis. This little guy even dared to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against foreign Goliaths like the Volkswagen Beetle and Toyota Corolla. 
The brainchild of Richard Teague, the gremlin's appearance was, let's say, unique. It was a little bit like the wallflower at the party, its boxy shape and abrupt rear end setting it apart from the crowd. But hey, it was the 70s, a time of innovation and experimentation in car design. Yes, the gremlin's look might be a bit divisive, but there's no denying that it is one of a kind. Peeking under the hood, the Gremlin offered a selection of engine options, from a humble inline six to a beefier V8 alternative. But, well, despite this variety, the car's performance and craftsmanship often fell short of the mark. Yet, the Gremlin had its day in the sun. It caught the eye of young drivers drawn to its low price and attractive look. A sizable number of Gremlins were eventually sentenced to the scrapyard, and some landed in landfills. So, what do you think? Did these cars meet their untimely end due to bad luck, poor business decisions, or simply design flaws? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos like these.